I would like to ask you if it really needs uh, for in order for that um, new vision, different perception, new lookout. Um, and does it really need a collapse or an explosion? Since that one is only in the dream, so this collapse and explosion is not real. It's in the dream, but it still needs it. How no, nothing, this work? Hmm? No, nothing is needed, and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. It's only that what we're talking here about. We're really talking about two realities. One is the natural reality, simply yeah. what is, and the other reality is the. It's, the separate reality, the artificial reality. And in the artificial reality, what's understood as stories, descriptions, but where they're coming from is no thing. The description of the apparent collapse of the contracted energy is just a description, like a story or a parable, which, which is trying to um, illuminate the situation but actually there is no contracted energy, there is nothing that is separate. Yeah. And there isn't a collapse, and there isn't a liberation. <laughs> only, it's only for the seeker, because the seeker can only comprehend what's, what is, can begin to comprehend its dilemma. Its dilemma, the hopelessness of being a seeker. And strange enough, when that, when that sense or recognition or illumination of the absolute hopelessness of the seeker is somehow illuminated or comes, becomes apparent, then it's possible that then something else can arise. So what we're really trying to do here, by describing it, the collapse of the contracted energy, we're only trying to clarify or describe something which in the end actually doesn't happen. Okay. And when, when that, that which doesn't happen seems to happen. <laughs> <laughs> then there's a second, sudden recognition that there's nothing happening, that this is no thing happening. This is no thing appearing to be something that's happening. This is an appearance. This is no thing playing at being a, a group of people in the room. It's not really happening. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. So, in some way or other, when that when that's illuminated, something begins to come. We notice that things, something begins to collapse in the me, in the fixed me. The me that thinks it's so real um, starts to wobble, and uh, and it's quite possible that the whole thing will suddenly collapse, and then a body will ring Tony Parsons up and say, oh, now I'm laughing because I understand that you can't describe to me what this is like that's just happened to me, or it doesn't happen to me, but what's just happened, you can't describe. And I can't describe it to you. I have so many people phoning me up and saying, I can't describe this to you. And I know why you can't describe it to anybody. There's an attempt to describe it, but it's inconceivable, it's a mystery. It's unknowable. So no, there is no contraction energy, there is no collapse. But it's recognized when it when it There's a recognition that there never was a, a contracted energy to collapse. Mm -hmm. What's recognized is the utter fallacy of separation. Mm -hmm. The utter fallacy of it. Mm -hmm. Separation, what does that mean? Oh, yeah. That's freedom. Mm -hmm. Because now all that's left, all that's left now is it. Yeah. Thank you. But for what there is contracted there is contracted energy um, in the body. It only feels as though it is, and that contracted energy that you think is there is not real. The problem for the me is that the me lives in a circle, in a story, where it thinks everything is real, including the feeling of being contracted. So it feels absolutely real. What's, it, what's not realised is that it's real and unreal, that it is no thing arising apparently as a contracted energy. 
for, the, for the me, it feels as though it's absolutely real. And I'm absolutely real. I am a real person who feels this contracted energy. That's, that's the dilemma of the seeker. Up until now, I, I had the idea that um, everything is energy. <clears throat> is that the everything is energy. Everything is energy. Yeah. And part of this energy is contracted and part of it is expanded or not contracted. But the energy is both real and unreal. The energy is nothing arising as an apparent manifestation. This is energy. This is nothing arising as the energy of a room full of people. It's real and it's unreal. It is and it isn't. So your contracted energy that you think is real in you, a real person, is simply in appearance. Thank you. <laughs> did you hear, did you hear the sort of... <laughs> there was a real edge to that, wasn't there? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Question. Uh, you mentioned before that um, as a child, we all are in the, still in the oneness and well, there is just one. There is the oneness, and uh, then whatever we lose it uh, over aging, then. And so I assume that uh, the reason why we lose it is not that there is a biological whatever clock or switch saying with an age of three years everyone loses it, <laughs> but there is an influence from outside that then uh, makes it so that. No. So what's then the reason why we lose it as a child? There isn't the one. Reason. There isn't a reason for this now. There's no reason for this happening. But it Just triggers. It's happening. Let's say the triggers. It's only the me that wants a reason for yeah. it. But it triggers that we lose it. I assume the triggers that we lose it come from outside. Well, no, they are. It is purely all there is is energy, and within that energy arises the apparent separation. There isn't anything outside. Advisor, advice. The word advisor means not to. The word non-dualism means nothing that is apart. There isn't anything that's apart. There is only energy. And with energy and energy, there is an apparent arising of separation. It has absolutely no reason to happen. It just seems, seems to happen. But it happens. It seems it to happen. happen. It, seems, it happen. seems to happen. Yeah. And uh, so my feeling is that if, if we can lose it as a child, there might be some also a kind of uh, process, a trigger, that we can return to that state. Yeah. So, so that's another uh, idea that the seeker has, okay. which is utterly, unfortunately, futile. Because that implies that there's something that can choose to do something. Only in your dreams. <laughs> Fear is just an emotion that arises. Fear is energy arising through. What is here? What is here? What is real? Nothing. 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 There is no such thing as reality, a fixed reality, except in the dream of separation. In the dream of me, there seems to be something that's real called me and the objects that are out there. So for this sentence in the dream, I really am a person and that wall is really over there. It's real. It's over there, about 20 meters. It's separate from me. It's another object. It's a dream world in which there seems to be something that is real. In the natural reality, everything is real and unreal. It's absolutely obvious. It's absolutely obvious that this is nothing appearing as this. It's obvious. Except for the me who thinks this is real. The me can't see the unreal, and the me dares see the unreal. Because if the unreal was seen, there wouldn't be a me. So sitting on a seat for the individual is absolutely real. Wow! 
this is really happening. They daren't see that sitting and seek is real and dying. If it did, it would die. So it stays apart from sitting and seek in order only to see what it wants to see. That's real, and so am I. And so I will continue. Mm -hmm. Tony, uh, about this, is that one? Or, uh, yeah. About this energy, <clears throat> um, you say there seems to be energy. Apparently, there's energy. But if it's only apparent, then what is there? Oh, there isn't anything. Nothing, I know. No. Nothing. No. Everything is only apparent. Everything is nothing appearing as everything. And the same goes for energy. Oh, well, that is the same thing, yeah. And the, everything that arises is nothing arising as energy or wholeness or oneness or whatever word you want to use. Well, within reason. Beingness. I I somehow always had the idea that um, there's that when there's nothing left, it's still energy. There's still energy there. Well, you could, in answer to that, you could say that no thing is potential energy. It's potential. If that makes it clear. It's potential. No energy. thing is not doing anything, but strangely enough, at the same time, it is also being everything. It isn't that it's in a little cave somewhere doing nothing and then it appears. No, really. It is that what you're looking at at the moment is nothing, appearing as something. But it's or the, it's the potential po energy appearing as energy. It's the potential part. Oh, right. Um, there is, no thing is potentially energy. Yeah, but the, but the, but in a way, what that can bring you to believe is that there are two things. It isn't two things. This is energy. This is nothing energizing. Appearing as. So who are you then? Uh, no one, of course. There isn't a you to be who. No. There's no who, there's no you. There's nothing here. Who are you? <laughs> Same as you. Because you talked about self-inquiry and who? often Tony Parson talked at the beginning about self-inquiry and there's often the question, who am I? Oh, well, self-inquiry is just another process or, or taught path for uh, the me to learn and, and move towards somewhere else. It's just a teaching which keeps the seeker reinforced and screwed into the train of seeking. Yeah, because often there's an answer given, like, you are cosmic consciousness. Or yeah, we are. Well, there are lots of answers. I, you, you, you probably know some I do. You are a cosmic consciousness. You can find your true nature. You can, you can get rid of all ignorance and find supreme knowledge. You can discover that knowledge and your consciousness knows. It's, there's dozens of them. It's all crap. Yeah, it's misleading in a sense. Well, yeah, well, it's not misleading, it's just another reward you get after a lot of effort. You don't get it, although you can actually experience, I did experience detachment and knowing that I am oneness for about oh, three minutes, I think. <laughs> it's just bullshit, it's just another school you go to to learn something that you soon have to forget again. It's just knowledge. Tony, one question. How can you survive in no, nothing? I mean, from the oh, practical point of view. It's amazing. There is a guy that goes on. It doesn't come this often, often to meetings now. I'm not surprised because he firmly believes that life couldn't go on without him. That's really what you're saying. Me is an added piece of 
software that is utterly and completely useless. And this life doesn't need me, but me appears in this. But this me compete in the practical world. Sorry? This me compete, you know? No, so you don't it believes it does in its dreams, yeah. In the dream of me, the me dreams that it actually has free will choice and that it can take action to bring about consequence. That is a dream. So when nothing happened, then you work as you... I mean, in the past, I mean... Sorry? When nothing happened or when me disappeared, you can work as a previous, I mean... Probably about a 20 to 30 or 40 percent better than you ever did when there was a me there, yeah? <laughs> because you don't have something telling you how you should work or how you shouldn't work. There's no longer this thing sitting on your shoulder. That's an adopted belief system. That's all over and there's just action. Just you know, reaction, response, life out of nothing. Mark. Um, there are so, certain moments like when you look at a, a painting or have a good meal or listen to a song when there is uh, nothing. Is that it? Or make it up, that's the best one. Right. Oh, I, I, I thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but is that it or is Well, it can be up. There's no way of describing it. You can't describe it. But there, are, there are times when there is no one. There's just nothing. It's indescribable. Obviously, in deep sleep, there is no one. So it's a very inconstant state for me. It comes back usually in the dreams before awakening. And certainly, when awakening happens, it usually rushes back in with also with awful tales, tales of foreboding. Yeah. Not always, but yeah. So and then in the day, it may be there, it may not. 
but it isn't necessarily noticeable if it's not there. And so it is. It also happens in sport, I expect you for major people who go running and in the sport, they can be uh, nothing there but what's happening. There is noticing that there is a lot of resistance against the corruption at the moment in the world. Corruption. Yeah, it, yeah it's not real, but in the body, uh, there's the sensing of get tense because of this um, resistance. And by noticing, the tension gets less. And now there's still this, because I no, there's nobody, but there's still this feeling that there is a doing or that you can do something about oh, this right. tension here. You know? Yeah, absolutely. How, yeah. But then that's the, how it is in, in that world, you know? the idea that there can be something done about. But also what's, what's, what's um, <coughs> interesting about it is that the resistance that is there is also this. There's, a, there's always in the me, the me lives in, in the dualistic world, and the, the me dream is dualistic. So it, it, it sees one thing that's better than another, or something that's different to another. So the tension it is learned from the great masters and the teachers of meditation. <laughs> it's somehow adopted the idea that tension or resistance is not good. So, you know, you need to work with it or deal with it or do something with it or meditate your way out of it or something. But in fact, there isn't anything that's good or bad. There is only what is. So resistance and tension is what is. It keeps the me alive. Yeah. But there's no <coughs> doing. Yeah. Sorry? There's no doing. There's no doing. There's only an apparent doing. The beloved never leaves you. It will arise as tension. It will arise as resistance to itself. Energy is brilliant. It can do anything. It will even build churches in search of itself. Isn't that wonderful? <coughs> Tony, I would like to know how to feel uh, to deal with the pain body. So how do you feel? How to deal with the pain body? There isn't physical, anything, no. Physical there, pain. There isn't anything we can deal with anything. Yes. There's only pain or not. There isn't anything that can deal with it. The dream is that there is, um, there is something there that can deal with something that's really happening. That's the dream. It's, a, it's an illusion. But uh, it is in the body. 
It but is it's uncomfortable. Not, so what? It's in the body. The pain, the pain. Yeah, so. So what is uh, its message? <laughs> well, if you believe that there is something that has a message, then what you believe is in a story. What you believe is that pain is a message which could lead you, if you follow the message, from A to B. There's no you, there's no A, there's no B. So, so what to do in this case? If you have a There is nothing case. to do and there's no one to do it. There is only what is. So just accept this? No. <laughs> No, accepting it is someone accepting something. That isn't what this is about. This isn't about something accepting something. This isn't about something surrendering to something. It is only pointing to what already is. But why it is in the body? Why, it why not? See? Why it might be in the wall, it might be anywhere, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It just so happens that it's in the body. So when you start asking why, then you're back in the story of the me, trying to find out a reason why something's happening so that they can put it right. Why is how? Why am I separate? How do I not be separate? So you want to say, um, when you feel... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I use sign language. Tony, can you say something about awareness or consciousness? Because you said it's bullshit awareness. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really um, understand what people mean by the word consciousness. I think they mean awareness. What, what do you think consciousness is? I, I, you know, I, I don't know what you mean. I, I would never use the word because I think it's very misleading. You know, if you, some people say all there is is consciousness, which, which if you read people who write about consciousness, it's very, it seems to me very apparent that they're saying <coughs> that all there is is awareness. Well, that's just absolute nonsense. Complete wonderful nonsense. It's, it's completely built into the story of the individual who lives on this train which is separate and which keeps it separate by being aware of it. And actually, people teach people to be aware, you know, to develop your awareness over a period of many months. Actually, there isn't anybody, <laughs> there isn't anybody in the world who is 